military time 1800, 1800 hours because as you may well know it's only a 24 hour clock and there's not 1800 hours in a day there's only 24 hours in a day so basically uh, the standard convention of time AM and PM is broke the clock is broken down to two 12 hours uh, you have an AM half that is 12 hours and a PM half that is 12 hours so if you want to know in the full 24 hours where you are in the day if it's p.m. all you do is take the number let's say six o'clock add 12 to it 12 plus uh, 6 is 18 that gives you 18 hours in the day that's where we're into now no that's where I went up to, to my parents house for dinner so yeah my day started 18 out uh, 18 hours into the day of uh, September 4th I think it's September 4th, right? That's what I said before? Yeah, Tuesday, September 4th. <laughs> but, the, but don't forget, this is where it becomes a, a, a real issue, is that uh, I ended my day around uh, 12.30, uh, uh, 12, 30, yeah, 12 hours and 30 minutes into the day of, into today's day. And that's what I was like, you, you, I was tempted to go say into the day of Tuesday, uh, September 4, 2000. Well, that's today, though. But in your mind, because the way you think about things as you, when you wake up from sleeping, you're starting something sort of new, uh, the mind doesn't necessarily click in that it's the same day, even though it is the same day, and you try to you treat that earlier hour as a different day. So that's sort of the perspective that sort of uh, evolves uh, from in there. Anyway, I've got some interesting uh, some uh, tweets and uh, comments from uh, MC, uh, who's uh, trust me, I'm weird. And I think that uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue on uh, in my explanation of things. I'm not going to sort of just simply put out the one statement that I had made uh, in the sort of that came up uh, on uh, the, uh, the August. 31st uh, uh, episode of Big Bang Theory, uh, uh, a large chunk of it was did, uh, was sort of uh, about uh, the myth of uh, uh, gay mythology and the myth of gay marriage. And there still needs more explanation because this topic is, a, is actually a very huge topic. It goes into history and there's a lot of history to really sort of digest and it's not sufficient to do it in I know YouTube likes uh, YouTube considers five minutes long but this isn't going to be five, ten, fifteen, even or even fifteen minutes in length there's hours and years worth of research that uh, could and should be brought forward uh, into this particular issue so and not only this, but it, 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 that sort of affect and sort of intersect with this issue uh, and because uh, history is not all about gay marriage and so on and so forth but it does intersect uh, you do have uh, a sort of a prolonged history if you go back into 
let's say the ancient Greeks, where uh, in many cases historians believe that there was, you know, homosexuality was practiced. But if you go into the laws and the annals, you read the original Greek text, while there was a tolerance for homosexuality, the official line, the official laws were fun fundamentally against it. In other words, uh, it didn't matter whether or not uh, the society was Christian or not. Homosexuality was never viewed as being part of the norm or being normal. So history in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of homosexuality being normal, uh, history is, is, is not on the side of homosexuality. And neither is uh, most cultures historically in the world uh, anthropology, in terms of that, even if you go, go into the anthropological studies of, of tribes and stuff like that, even to go into the primitive societies, there really isn't a support for uh, homosexuals in the society at large. Uh, this is not to say that the lit also these religions that they were practicing. And religion is the practice of a particular belief. And it doesn't matter what the belief is, as long as you believe something and you practice that belief, then you have a religion. This is why she said, well, one of her comments was that homosexuality is in a religion. The problem is because there isn't proof, there's an absence of proof of homosexuality in terms of its nature, then it automatically shifts over to belief. And because the intellectual interaction with belief and religion uh, from the university is to to term it myth and mythology, then we treat things, and this is what I'm trying to keep things as, as academic as possible and not go into personal beliefs, then you, instead of, because there is no proof of homosexuality being a natural phenomenon or something natural, it is now, it goes back to belief, it moves back to a belief, and because people practice on this belief, there is a religion of homosexuality. This is sort of how it turns itself out when you turn things into their anthropological uh, understandings. Further, if <laughs> you use the terminology that is used in anthropology to describe beliefs and the systems that derive from beliefs, that, that, that in other words, you have myth and mythology, then you cannot isolate uh, homosexuality, or, or any belief another, above another belief, every, all these beliefs have to have a myth and a mythology, including homosexuality, if it's a belief. In other words, you can't, because you're a homosexual, you, and, you believe, and you're studying anthropology, and you see that, you, that uh, homosexuality does not have the proof that it says it does, and therefore, it now becomes a belief in this. Then you can't say that your belief is significantly better than another person's belief or another tribe's belief that you call mythology. So if one belief is a mythology, then all beliefs are mythology until proven otherwise. And this is sort of the position that I've taken with homosexuality. It is not a personal slight. It is a categorization of a belief in the anthropo anthropological manner that all beliefs are categorized in. And yes, this is going to hurt a lot of people. But the thing is, that I, and this is where I have a lot of great gay friends who are going to be hurt by this. But the thing is, is that with, where the, the corollary or the other side comes is that uh, as we go through the research and bring some of the stuff out, uh, even Christians on the right are going to be hurt by this because when I talk about Christian fundamentalism, I'm not talking about the, 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 the commonly known Christian fundamentals, fundamentalists because they were around in 18, uh, their, their fundamentals uh, are around the 1800s and Christ was at zero AD. Right? You can't talk about the Roman Catholic as being the church because they came up at a thousand AD.
So neither the nothing from the Catholics on are the fundamentals of Christianity. The fundamentals of Christianity is from 800 D, 800 AD in prior. That's the fundamentals of Christianity. That's and, that, and that, that's based on a historical and anthropological scale, not on our own personal perspective of what we consider to be the church or, 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 or you know, whether it's Roman Catholicism or this or that or any of these other derivatives. Historically, Roman Catholicism and everything that comes out of Roman Catholicism, including the evangelical movement, known as the Christian right or the Christian fundamentalist, these are all derivatives of Christianity. They're not Christianity themselves. <laughs> and a lot of these people are now going, how can you say that? Well, that's what historically is, is there. And you can follow the derivations in history of how these different groups and factions and denominations evolve and why they evolve. And so, as I said, I'm going to try to keep the argument here as academic as possible and not really get into my own personal beliefs. Uh, and as I said, leave the, the decision and what you accept is true or not true up to yourself. I will be providing references to go and do a further study, but the further study is not a minute study. It is significant and it's in depth. It is on the level where you might, be, uh, in terms of the grade level, uh, this girl is uh, MC and is 14 years old. I'm talking about something that, in terms of your depth of study, I'm talking graduate studies or more. In graduate studies or more, graduate studies or greater, it's after, it's the, it's, it's the schooling after your first level of university. The first level of university is not the first year, it's the first four years. You have the bachelor's degree. Most people stop at their bachelor's degree and then there's graduate school after that. For those who want to go further for their master's and PhD, they go uh, to graduate school. And this is what I'm talking about. The research that, that really gets into the nitty gritty here is graduate school level and beyond. In other words, you're, you're, you're going beyond the textbook, you're going beyond uh, what somebody tells you into really researching and finding the original sources and trying to understand what was said when and how it fits into everything. And this is a, is a, is a complex process, it's not simple, it, and it can't be distilled into 15 minutes. This is the problem, it can't be distilled into 15 minutes. There's no way to do it, there's too much information, and it, even if I could distill things down to a certain degree, when I put this out there, there are things you're going to need to go check out. There are th need, things you need to see for yourself that you need to understand for yourself. Just because I went through a dis an X amount of research and went down a particular research path, even if you came down the same research path that I went down, there's no guarantee that you're going to see what I saw or understand what I understood. And the thing is, I'm still on that path. I'm not finished on that path yet. There's still a lot more to go. So, as a, this is where I'm going to sort of handle things how I'm going to handle it because, you know, I, I, I don't want to, you know, as it, life as you get older provides you with an X amount of challenges. How you live your life and how your life turns out depends on how, one, how you perceive and view these challenges, and then two, how you work to make the outcome come from these particular challenges. Like, in, in your outcome is things can happen to you. And how you react to it becomes your choice. And every choice you make, including the choices you choose not to make, all of these things, all these choices have consequences and results at the end of it. And some of the results are good and some of the results are bad. And in many, in many cases, you're going to have a mixture of both good and bad results. And or good and bad consequences. And again, it ends up boiling down to your perspective. Do you see life as being bad and horrible and only looking at the negative things? Or do you see the positive things in your life, the things that are good in your life, even though you do have things that are bad in your life? If you're always dwelling on the negative, it doesn't matter how much good you have in your life, 
you always see the negative. If you see a lot of positive nature, and try to look for positive stuff, then in many cases, this is where you see people who have a lot of horrors in their life become very resilient and say, I can push through this. And like I said, this is, um, uh, this is how you have choices. This is how you deal with things. This is how you proceed in order to find where you want to be or what your life is going to be like. So anyway, I'm going to leave this segment here like this for now. And I'm going to mill about and do the rest of the day. The rest of the day starts now. Alrighty. Yeah, it's uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. It's Wednesday, September 5th, 2012. This is the second segment of uh, Big Bang CRL for today. Well, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the current period of time that I call a day. And as you all know, that day, that period of time could be within one day. It could be over a period of two days, three days. Yeah. So, uh... I'm uploading uh, uh, a comment, a comments why, uh, hoping that uh, we'll see how it goes in terms of uh, spurning a new discussion on the internet about uh, gay marriage and uh, the, what I call the gay mythology. And this is a term that I use, uh, as I said, it's an anthropological term that applies to any belief system that can't be proven that falls in. In other words, uh, it, it's something that falls back into belief. It doesn't have uh, what is called the, the superior intellect that most intellectuals associate with it. Uh, this is something that occurs, uh, actually started occurring in the 1970s when uh, the intellectual uh, intellectuals at universities started pushing the concept that uh, all the mythologies, and including Christianity, which was the, what they call the mythology, were all these sort of uh, made-up things that uh, no one could believe in, or, or, or in other words, they were means of explaining things that people didn't understand. And it was somewhat, well, not somewhat, it was tacitly dismissed and taken as the assumption that, but, but only through assertion, that uh, the intellectualism of the time, Western thought, was the superior thought to all the thoughts, that this was scientific and so on and so forth, and uh, this was the concept that was pushed forward. However, uh, come forward to today, and a large chunk of the notions that really pushed intellectualism intellectualism in the 1970s have, has kind of fallen apart. Uh, they have this sort of uh, fatal optimism that the next time, the next generation will get it right this time, and they never actually do. Uh, th this is to let uh, people know, or people who don't know, that uh, socialism, intellectualism is, is not new, it's actually rather old, and it's actually before 1970. 1970 was just sort of the last phase, the last major shift of it. Uh, it was sort of the age of, uh, uh, the, <laughs> the space age of enlightenment, if you will. Yeah, people were all, you know, they were, that's when they were landing on the moon. Uh, you had, uh, science was at its peak and really, you know, pushing forward. And no one expected the collapse that would occur in 1980 of this, uh, supposedly intellectual society. And it, the collapse came after that long recession in the 1970s. And now this is something that <laughs> it, it, it's, it's kind of hard to hard to deal to do here because it, 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 people say that, that reveals a, a generation gap that uh, revealing my age. But that's only if you consider that uh, uh, if you don't consider uh, people who that they don't look into history. In other words. They've got a dissociation from history to a point that the only thing they know about history is stuff they've experienced. So if it's before they were born, and that's usually the, the, the comment you get is that, well, that, I don't know about that, that was before I was born, assuming 
that um, <laughs> the reason you know about all this stuff is because you lived through it. Well, this is uh, true to a degree, but a large chunk of what I know about what happened in the 1970s also comes from uh, studying and reading. Uh, and it's my library work, my library research, and there's a lot, there's a lot of, and people don't realize this, and this is sort of what I'm going to explain here. There's a lot of information that's hidden from us. The stuff that's taught in schools, particularly up into the first and second year of university, is all prepared for us to show us a particular thought and idea on how society should be. In other words, these are, uh, they're blinders. They try to steer us in a particular direction. And very few people really break out of the mold and sort of like, let's think a little different. Let's sort of poke and see where the holes are in this particular view of society. And uh, sort of go where you're not supposed to go. But that's kind of what I did. Is I'm, the type of, I'm not the uh, genius eidetic memory like the way Sheldon Cooper is. Uh, my sort of broad view of, of everything in terms of my exploration of the universe really is more akin to I end up in places that I shouldn't end up I poke and ask questions where I shouldn't be asking questions and this in many cases gets me into a lot of trouble <laughs> but it's also kind of how I figure things out so it's not that I'm going after somebody to sort of uh, ruin their, their uh, ideals or burst their bubble or anything like that it's a matter of this is how I poke around to find out and understand the world around, around me and, and around myself. So, it's, a, it's not, it's not sort of such a, a, a genius type of thing as it is that uh, I'm just sort of wandering through the stacks of a library, uh, picking up different things that I find interesting and then going from there. So, it's, it, it is, as uh, in quantum physics says, the random walk. And 20 years on from the random walk, I started off doing puzzles and uh, looking for bizarre uh, documentaries and here I am now 20 years later and I have a lot of knowledge about things that uh, that aren't typically taught in schools and this is where I hope the discussion that I'm uploading now I'm beginning to upload the discussion uh, gay mythology and gay marriage I'm hoping to uh, open up a discussion uh, and spur a discussion on the internet that is not typical to open up and poke holes in things where typically, normally, you're not supposed to open up and poke holes. And, and that, because, again, there is a new morphology, a new paradigm now where you're not supposed to question homosexuality. If you question homosexuality, you're a homophobe, you're a hate monger, you're this, you're that, and uh, the number of names that come out uh, kind of become the contradiction to this whole thing on cyberbullying is not supposed to bully people, but bullying occurs uh, whenever you uh, go from an open and free discussion to uh, a sort of a mean attack and an ad, an, an, an ad hominem attack uh, on a person who simply is expressing an, op an opposing view and trying to sort of poke around and see what is what. So, that's what's going on now. I hope that this will make, in some ways, will make uh, Big Bang Theory or RL, the reality show, more interesting. Because I hope to sort of, this will be the interactive portion, comments why, and the, uh, the uh, playlist of uh, Big, uh, Big Bang Theory or RL, why. That, that, that's the list it's under. Uh, this will sort of be the interactive part of how you can interact with the uh, with um, the show. So I hope this go well. It's uploading up now. It's going to take about an hour. Well, no more than an hour. It says here 94 minutes to upload. So it's going to take some time. And then after that, after I've done this here, after I've done the uplo uploading for this, uh, the next thing that comes up is uh, I'll be doing the next. Uh, episode of uh, Big uh, editing the next episode of Big Bang Theory RL. So I think it's going to be another really, really long night. Anyways, uh, that's it for about now. Uh, for uh, that's it for now. I'll review this to see if I forgot anything. That happens sometimes. I start talking, 
and I can't remember where I was in the beginning, and now I've, I've kind of forgotten what uh, I was talking about to a certain degree, that I don't know if I've left anything out, and if I have, I'll come back and I'll do another segment, add another segment, and we'll talk about this a little, a little bit more. Alright, see you in the next segment. Uh, it's uh, 6 30 in the morning, yeah, 6 hours and 28 minutes into the day, or 6 hours and 30 minutes into the day of, uh, and, yeah, Wednesday, September 5th. Still going. At the editing desk, just finished editing, uh, the, uh, episode for, uh, September 1st to September 4th. It kind of gets us up to that point there. We're basically, uh, just, I think, one day off. Not bad. Uh, we're achieving the uh, the 30 minute mark. We're maybe just uh, with this, this one's a ten, uh, maybe 10 minutes under, but we're getting closer to that uh, to that uh, that um, <laughs> the 30 minute reality show mark. With not uh, being achieved a lot better, a lot more smoother than it was before and uh, this is uh, the second video of the day I'm gonna try and do more than that that's the whole goal is to, start, you know, is to be able to do more than just two videos a day and so that's the next now that I've got two videos done got that out and I'm getting caught up with the uh, with the uh, episode schedule yay that's good so Anyway, uh, there's going to be at least another uh, uh, 45 minutes before it's done. And then once it's done, uh, it has to go up to YouTube. So it's going to take another hour to there. So I'd say another two hours, 6.30 now. I say we've, the ending time will be anywhere between 8.30 and 9 o'clock in the morning, which isn't too bad. It's better than uh, noon. So... <laughs> That's what happened. And if you noticed, uh, 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 when I said I had finished at noon, uh, that, uh, that's in the episode that's uploading, if you, if, if you watch that episode, that it was kind of dark in the background. Well, there had just been a massive thunderstorm, and it was, it, 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 the amount of light that was coming through was as if it was nighttime, so, <laughs> it was 12 noon. Anyway, uh, that's it for this segment, and I'll see you in the next one. It's 10.30 a.m., and, uh, it's the end of the day. Yeah, I got through everything. Everything's put and posted. It's up on the social networks, uh, Facebook, MySpace, uh, um, Twitter, Tumblr, a little bit. So, I'm done. That's it for today, and I will be back tomorrow, or my tomorrow, which is in a few hours, to start the next episode of the Big Bang Theory RL. Stay tuned. Professor of what? Professor of physics. Free speech rules here at Democratic Earth.